all of these stones have several images carved into them. I, um, but today I'd like to talk about the elephants. I was going to talk about camels. But let's save that for later. When a talented stone carver works on pieces, um, it's really neat. But not all are carved with such intricate clarity. I want to show this elephant as an example. See where his trunk has been pressure flaked away? That gives that elephant about the right length of trunk. And uh, when the elephants are small and they don't take up a lot of room on the stone, you can find these little things in the dark. It's fun to find them in the dark. Just run your thumb along it and uh, then you pull it out of the dark and say, wow, I found it. But um, let's talk about elephants. Just about any soft wedge-shaped corner of any stone, and there's lots and lots of them on all tools, there's normally going to be an elephant. I've counted 11 elephants on one tool, but... This is some examples today. That is the elephant. This is the uh, uh, the fish that's also a net weight, which also has another fish on the other side. But anyway, back to elephants. Um, as I said, they're pretty easy to find. Just find a wedge shape and uh, some of the, I was going to say that some of the carving is natural. I mean, as far as the holes in there, I was going to call them the eyes, but this little guy really has its own eyes. And uh, that's another good thing to find. I mean, uh, make it easier to find elephants. They'll normally have both eyes picked out. Yeah, there's another one. Elephants are fun to find. Um, these two stones have a circumference and wear on both of them. And that's the only place there is wear. All the other edges are soft due to tiny pressure flaking, but these two stones must have been used for rounding large spears. And there's an elephant right there. <clears throat> These stones have more than just this elephant. But I just want to look at elephants today.
and you'll see some color left on these stones. This is a X. So have fun finding elephants. These abrasion and cutting tools each have two elephants with their trunks entwined. This is a hammerstone with an elephant on the bottom and two elephants with their trunks entwined, making a crescent cutter abrasion tool. This is two elephants with their trunks entwined. Making another crescent abrasion tool. This one actually has two right there also, and also two elephants right here. All three sides of this has two elephants with their trunks entwined. This is a small one.
this is an elephant. Very old, very faded, but the image can still be seen. This is also an elephant. This part of the stone is broken away where the trunk would have came down further. Obvious carving. This is another elephant on this stone. There's the eye right there. The reason these elephants are so uh, fading away is because they were not carved on stone. This is a Macedon skull, I guess an infant Macedon skull, and um, the carvings were done when the bone was fresh. There's two tusks that are bent this direction. There's the spine goes in there and the top. It is a infant Macedon skull. Even looks like an elephant was carved right here while the bone was still fresh. It has a piece missing from one eye ridge, which is what took away the trunk of that elephant. And on the other side, it appears to be all of the eye ridge missing. But that is a small Macedon skull with evidence, proof, that um, portable rock art or, you know, just carvings was done a long time ago. The tusk appeared to have been, had some chipping before, before they were just knocked out, broken off. We were broken off on purpose. This is a, this is stone. My question is, how long does it take bone to turn to stone?